Houston. So this is Node 2. This is a really cool module. Um, of course, most of these modules, you'll see they have four sides, uh, and they're put together. That way, we could sort of wa work on a flat plane, either a wall, a floor, another wall, or the ceiling. But you know, again, all you have to do is turn yourself and your reference changes. The reason I'm bringing that up is because this is where four out of six of us sleep. And so people always ask about sleeping in space. Do you lie down? Are you in a bed? Um, not really, because it doesn't matter. You don't really have the sensation of lying down. You just sit in your sleeping bag. So here's one sleep station right here. I'm going in right now. You can follow me if you want. So I'm inside. It's sort of like a little phone booth, um, but it's pretty comfy. I've got a sleeping bag right here that we sleep in so we don't have a, sort of like a little bit of a cover. We don't fly all over the place. Um, but you know, you can sleep in any orientation. I have it sleeping, feeling like I'm standing up right now, but like you saw, I'm on the floor, but it doesn't matter if I turn over and I sleep upside down. I can't have it, I don't have any sensation in my head that tells me that I'm upside down, so it really doesn't matter. The sleep station is also like a little office. We've got a computer in here. As you can see, we've got a couple little toys. I've got some books. I've got some clothes and other things that make it sort of like home. I'm coming out. And just for reference, that's one sleep station. This one's another right here. There's one on the ceiling, if you want to call it right here, and then there's a fourth on the other wall over here. So all of us sleep in a little bit of a, a circle. All right, come on back. There's more to show you. I know that there's some questions about how to use the bathroom, and how do you actually live in space like normal? Like at home, I mentioned real quickly about getting up in the morning and brushing your teeth and washing your face. Well, how do you do that? Well, here is the bathroom, essentially. You get up in the morning, and we have a little kit, and it has all the essential things that you need, like your toothbrush and toothpaste and brush. See how, see how much better the brush makes my hair look? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. It still stands up straight. It doesn't matter where you are. It's always going to stand up straight while you're up in space. A lot of people ask about toothbrush and toothpaste. So luckily enough, toothpaste, you can do it upside right this way, is sticky and so it sticks to your toothbrush. No problem. Another cool thing is that water sticks to your toothbrush too you can see it. I'll have some water come out. The water is pretty neat up in space. It'll stick to your toothbrush and it will make whoop, a big bubble. And that's just by surface tension. And then you can drink it. So a lot of people ask about what do you do with the toothpaste after you brush your teeth. Two options. Swallow it, and it's sort of like mouthwash, but it tastes a little gross. Or you can just spit it out in a paper towel and then you don't have to worry about it. Swallowing thing I wouldn't recommend at home. I'm only up here for four months, so it's not that bad. <laughs> One of the most pressing questions about using, being, living in space, of course, is the bathroom. So let's take a look at that little piece of work. Come on in. Here we are at the throne. This is awesome. You might see the little, um, you might have noticed the little moon on the outside. This is our 
orbital outhouse right here. And of course, it serves for two functions. Number two, right here, I'll show you. But you see it's pretty small, so you have to have pretty good aim and you'll be, be ready to make sure things get let go the right direction. And it smells a little bit, so I'm closing it up. And that's of course for number two. And this guy right here is for number one. So they're sort of two slightly separate functions, but you can do a little, essentially both, by hanging on right here and doing number one and number two. I might add it's color coded so you really don't get it mixed up, which is nice. This is yellows for number one. <laughs> and uh, also there's a selection of paper. People always ask about toilet paper. What do you do with toilet paper? What kind of toilet paper do you have? We have gloves just because sometimes it does get messy. We have some Russian wipes, which are a little bit coarse if you like the coarse type of toilet paper. We have some nice tissues, which are nice and soft, if you like soft toilet paper. We have huggies, um, just for any cleanup. You know, we were all babies once, and this sort of helps. And then if things get really out of control, we have uh, disinfectant wipes, just to make sure we clean up here. Because, you know, just like the water I showed you, the number one stuff can sort of go all over the place if you don't aim correctly. And did I mention, both of these have a little bit of suction, so they should keep things going in the right direction. But, um, like I said, sometimes things get a little out of control if you are out of control yourself flying around. So we have lots of protective stuff. And of course, you do have your privacy. There's a little door. So other people know that you're in there. Here's a pretty cool place. This is sort of like in your house where everybody meets in the morning. Uh, after you wash your face, brush your teeth, you want to find something for breakfast. And this is our kitchen. You might notice there's all sorts of foods here. Uh, it's like opening the refrigerator. You got all your different stuff that you want to have. Drinks, meats, eggs, vegetables, cereals, uh, bread, uh, snacks. And that's a good place. That's where you find all the candy. Uh, side dishes and then some little power bars just in case. So we have all this type of food. Some of it is dehydrated and so we have to hydrate it, fill it up with water. Some of it is already made and then all we have to do is heat it up. So something like this, I'm pulling out barbecued beef brisket. Pretty yummy. Not only is this food made in the U.S., but we also have food here from Japan. Uh, we've got Russian food. As you can see, all these red containers are filled with food that's from Russia. Um, and then we get some of our specialty stuff, some things that we like, some of our favorite stuff that your family can send up. In fact, I like fluffernutters, and so I got sent up some fluff so I could make my fluffernutter with peanut butter. So you have a lot of food up here, no problems. Now, I want to say where we are. So right now, we're in the Japanese laboratory. It's one laboratory out of many here on the International Space Station. It's actually on the left-hand side. If I was International Space Station and I was flying through space like this, my left hand would be where the Japanese laboratory is. So now again, we're on the right-hand side, all the way on the right of the International Space Station. This is Columbus, the European module. It has science experiments all over. You could see it looks a little bit crowded. And here we do a lot of our medical experiments. Here we are in the U.S. laboratory. Again, this is a laboratory with science experiments on all of the walls here, all sorts of stuff that we do. Um, and one of the things we also do is we exercise. We have some exercise equipment on board the space station. Um, we need to do that because we lose bone density and muscle mass while we're up here, and that's a result of not having to fight against gravity. So how we keep ourselves in shape are with a bike, a treadmill, and a weightlifting machine. This is the bike. You notice the clip pedals. So all you need to do is actually clip your feet in and then you can start pedaling. You don't need a seat. 
because you don't sit down. Actually, I haven't sat down for six months now, so you don't need any any type of seat. Just make sure you're you're held in with your pedals. You probably see that the bike bounces around a little bit. As I move it, it's not steady and held to the wall firmly. And the reason for that is the space station is pretty big. You saw that there's also solar arrays on the space station. If we start putting any forces into the space station, it's going to make those solar arrays bounce around a little bit. So to prevent that, the machines bounce around a little bit, move around a little bit, and that way we don't put any forces onto the structure of the spacecraft out to the solar rays. All right, a little farther on. Come on. I'm here with my two buddies uh, in the airlock. Actually, these are two spacesuits uh, that are ready, primed up to go outside, as we call it, to go do a spacewalk in case we have to do anything outside. Some of the things we do outside are just like inside repairs. We have a lot of um, electrical boxes and machinery and solar arrays, in fact, that I talked about earlier, that are outside, and sometimes they don't work quite right. Um, remember, space is really cold and really hot, and it's also the vacuum of space with no pressure, and so some of the equipment doesn't work well all the time. So we might have to 